Chris Sturhan. Welcome to another episode of Drinks from Eddie Muller's Noir Bar. Each week I take a chapter from the book Eddie Muller's Noir Bar, Cocktails Inspired by the World of Film Noir, and I talk about the film in that chapter and I make the drink associated with it. Today we're going to be looking at the film DOA and making the drink the last word. Now DOA stars Edmund O'Brien and it's got a rather interesting premise. Um, this film begins with Edmund O'Brien uh, walking into the police station and he says he wants to report a murder and when asked who was murdered he said I am or I was. Um, he, uh, the rest of the film is told through a flashback where it explains how he end up being murdered. He is actually poisoned and he spends the rest of the film trying to hunt down his killers. Now um fun fun movie uh it's it really just moves around moves along at at kind of a breakneck pace and that's kind of what makes it really work um edmund o'brien um is a an accountant uh he's he seems to be getting rather serious about his secretary and as a result he kind of, to me it seems like he wants to go and take one last fit fling and sow some wild oats before he ends up uh, getting engaged to her. Um, at least that's what it seemed to me. He decides he wants to take a vacation. He goes to San Francisco. He checks into a hotel, a hotel that is overrun by a bunch of middle-aged salesmen having a convention, and they all act like a bunch of uh, teenage boys. Wait, scratch that. They actually act like middle-aged salesmen who tend to act like teenage boys. So there you go. Um, a lot of, you know, kind of innuendo and and sex jokes that aren't really even all that sexy, but you know, hey, they're fun and that's kind of the way it works. Um, he gets invited to a party. He, they end up leaving the hotel and going to a jazz club where the music's really swinging and somebody switches drinks on him and that's how it happens. Um, the next morning he wakes up to find out that he's feeling rather poorly he goes to the doctor the doctor runs some tests they find out that he has been poisoned by a luminous poison and he has anywhere from a day or so to maybe two weeks to live um, he thinks that has to be wrong he goes to another doctor who confirms that and he spends the rest of the movie trying to figure out who poisoned him. Um, his main lead takes him to Los Angeles and he ends up there. The, the lead has an office in the Bradbury building, which is possibly the coolest building in all of Los Angeles. So you get to see the Bradbury building um, and a lot of uh, LA locations. I don't Think there were that many San Francisco locations, if if any at all. Um, but the LA locations are, are pretty cool. Um, my thought is they probably spent most of the budget on this film on Edmund O'Brien. Uh, there really aren't many other stars in there in the film. Um, there is William Ching, who I know mostly from Pat and Mike. Uh, where he loses the the girl, Catherine Hepburn, to Spencer Tracy. I kind of have a feeling he made a career out of losing the girl to guys who were not as good looking as him, but bigger stars. Um, it also is the first credited role for Neville Brand, and he is just psychotic, which he does very, very well. Um, as I say, it's it's a fun, it's a fun little movie great watch um it is in the public domain because they never re renewed the copyright on it so there are a lot of bad copies ar running around so you might want if you want to try to buy it you might want to try to find a copy that at least somebody said seems like a decent copy because basically anybody can can make a copy of it and put it on a dvd and sell it um you know so you may end up with something that was dubbed from a vhs or something like that if you're not careful but the movie itself is is pretty awesome um there are some some tv people you might um might recognize uh jerry jerry paris who was uh um dick van dyke's neighbor on the dick van dyke show there's uh sam uh 
Frank Cady, who played Sam Drucker on on Green Acres. So, but mostly it's Edmund O'Brien. And not that the other people are not good. It's just he's he's like the only real star in the film. Still, it's a great film. Um, and it it does something that's a little bit unusual in that normally a film like this, when somebody is poisoned, there's usually an antidote. Well, this film, there is no antidote for this poison. Um, I won't tell you whether they whether they wuss out on it in case you haven't seen seen this film, but um, I think the ending worked. So there we go. Anyway, we are going to uh, take a quick break and we're going to come back and make the last word. I hope you stick around for that. Thanks. And we're back. So uh, we are now going to make the last word. Now, um, hopefully you, if you hear some music in the background, apparently one of my neighbors is having a party. So uh, hopefully that isn't too distracting. The uh, last word is a shaken drink. So we're going to start with our shaker and we're going to load it up with ice. And this drink has Four ingredients, equal parts of each, which would be three quarters of an ounce. So let me find my thing and we'll start with the gin. And so three quarters of an ounce of gin. Okay. And our next ingredient is Luxardo maraschino liqueur and we've got three quarters of an ounce of that okay and the next ingredient is green chartreuse now green chartreuse is not this uh green chartreuse is made by some monks in the french alps the swiss alps and apparently rather recently they have decided that they were going to cut production down on green chartreuse by like two-thirds so the result is that green chartreuse the price of it is gone through the roof like 150 200 a bottle if you can find it um, i spoke to a guy at a very high-end liquor store and he said that they get in two bottles and they are immediately bought by high-end bars that need to keep in keep green chartreuse in stock so if you need um, green chartreuse, this, according to most people, is a pretty decent, um, a pretty decent substitute. It is Genepi, I'm probably mispronouncing it, Genepi Le Chamois. Um, I will put that in the um, in the description. And uh, there are a couple others that you could try as well, but uh, this one was twenty eight dollars a bottle, which is more in my price range. So anyway, we're going to give it a good kick. Wait, did I do the... Yeah, I'm not done. Okay. Now. Now, we're going to put it in a chilled coupe glass. And in this case, they he recommends double straining it. So I've got the one strainer and then the second strainer. A lot of times you double strain when you have something like muddled blackberries or something, and you want to keep them out of the drink. In this case, what we're really probably doing is just keeping um, the pieces of ice out of the drink. Um, it won't necessarily keep the drink from being cloudy because shaking the drink will introduce air bubbles and I assume that's what they wanted um, and that'll make the drink cloudy but if it um, but it, the straining will keep the uh, the chips of ice from going into the drink anyway so here we go this would be the last word oh I forgot my garnish. Two. Well, it says Luxardo cherries. I chose two. So here we go.
Ooh, that's a good drink. That is a really nice drink. Nice and tart. But not overly tart, not overly sweet. Um, you know, when I tried the uh, the Genipee, it had almost a a cough syrupy taste, which normally I would not like. But here, I can I can taste stuff going on that that I think is really good, and I'm sure that's a toned down version of the the cough syrupy. So anyway, the last word, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. So from a booth in the back of Eddie Muller's Noir Bar, we're going to say good night and cheers and hope you join us next week. Thanks. Bye.